okay, there are tens of thousands of different diseases currently known to medicine. So it is no surprise that there's such a huge drive in drug discovery. An industry that worldwide makes over $1 trillion in sales. But still it takes between 12 and 15 years for one drug to make it from proof of concept and design to be tested in cells, in animals, in humans, to then be successfully making it up to market. And that can cost billions of pounds for one drug to get there. And even after all of that, only 10% of drugs actually ever make it. So that tells us how important it is for us to try and drive for improvements in drug discovery. So my PhD looks at peptide drug discovery, using peptides to treat disease. And peptides are essentially small proteins made up of typically 2 to 50 amino acids. And over the last couple of decades, there's been a huge rise of interest in peptide drugs for various reasons. Now in the market currently, there's about 50 peptide drugs, one of which is insulin, and hundreds more preclinically and clinically in trials. Now, peptide drugs are both safe and well tolerated when administered to patients. They have good potency and good efficacy, and very importantly, they're very selective to the target, and that's because of their natural characteristics, which means that when we use them and give them to patients, there's fewer off-target side effects, which is very important. But like all drug types, there are, of course, downfalls. Peptide drugs are his historically known for being quite poor at actually reaching the target, sometimes not always quite getting there in one piece and doing their job, and that's for various reasons. One of which is their poor ability to sometimes get across the cell membrane and to get into a cell and actually hit the target that it's intended to. So in my PhD, what we first do is, is we identify protein-protein interactions in disease. And when these two proteins bind together, they cause a chain reaction that either that will progress or perhaps even cause the disease to occur. So we then look at the exact binding sites between those two proteins right down to the very amino acids that anchor them together. And then we can design our own peptide disruptor based on those binding sequences. And what we'll do is to make sure that that peptide gets into the cell, we'll add on another novel cell penetrate peptide onto the peptide disruptor that we created and administer it. And that will then help it get into the cell, find its target, disrupt it, and hopefully halt that disease. So this has been shown to work in cardiovascular disease, in central nervous system diseases, in cancers, and a lot more. And currently, we're working on trying to do it for skin cancer, brain cancer, and atherosclerosis, as well as aging. So with any luck, and with a hell of a lot of hard work, using these kind of peptide disruptors to treat disease, will hopefully give new innovative um, therapeutic avenues to try and treat disease in the future. Thank you.